Hello everyone. Welcome to the SRA Corrective Reading and Reading Mastery to Inform online tutorial. The first thing that you're going to do is log in with your McGraw-Hill account. Today I'm going to be using a demonstration account to show you data and what it looks like on the website. So when you get into ConnectEd, you're going to click on the SRA to inform tile. This is the online platform where you're going to enter all of your data. It says that it helps place, tracks daily independent practice, and provides mastery test data with corresponding group and individual remedies. And it involves includes a variety of reports um, with your mastery tests and aids with progress monitoring. So when you get to this platform, the professional learning environment is where you can view videos, go through an online tutorial and download a certificate to get credit. Um, there's a user's guide on how to use to inform and for administrators like coaches and principals, this is your online guide when you look at the administration view. So teachers are going to click on the SRA to inform tile. And you're going to click on the program that you teach. First, we're going to work in reading mastery and then we are going to look at corrective reading. So first, we're going to use, look at reading mastery for kindergarten through second grade teachers that teach this program. And this is what your home page looks like. There's the data entry, reports, and students and groups. So right now I am going to click on Reading Mastery Signature Edition First Grade for demonstration purposes. And the first thing that I always click on when students are in front of me and I'm teaching is the new class session under daily lessons and I take attendance. So today is November 2nd. I am going to be teaching lesson 8 and it is going to be an instruction day. Some days you may be testing. It might be a remediation day after you test where you reteach. It might be a non-instruction day. Um, the only time I could think that this might happen is if you have like a field trip or something that made instruction not occur that day to log it in. And then you may have an instruction and a test day. So maybe you test for a little bit and then when you finish you start your next lesson. So I'm going to click on instruction day. I'm teaching lesson 8. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to take attendance. So I'm going to click mark all students as present because Valerie and Darlene are here today. And this is their instructional workbook. So as I grade their workbook, I'm going to put their score in here. So I'll just say maybe Valerie had one error and Darlene had five errors. But this would be after I complete my lesson. Um, and after I completed my lesson, I'm going to click lesson completed on this day and click set. So this yellow bubble appeared and shows that my lesson is complete. I'm going to click another class session. Um, I'm going to click tomorrow session for Friday. Oh, not the 6th. Oh, this is in October. So I have to make sure I'm in the correct month. So I'm going to click November 3rd. I'm going to be on lesson 9 and let's say something happened where I couldn't get through my whole lesson. So I'm going to mark both my students here and I'm not going to click lesson completed because I didn't finish it. I'm going to press set. So you'll notice that for lesson 9 there is an open yellow circle here. So this means that I didn't finish this lesson and that I would just go in the next day and mark that I completed that lesson whenever I finish it. So this is something important to look at, your yellow dots, to see how you're progressing with lessons. And it also tracks attendance. How are your students doing? Are they there? Um, is this reading intervention working for them? Is it based on attendance? Or maybe it's something with instruction. So after I do this, um, this is where you do your testing. 
So as I go through this, um, for lesson 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on, I would enter their scores. So I'm going to say, let's say for this first test, the student got 6 out of 6 points. The pressing criteria was 5, so I'm going to put her score in. So Valerie has a green circle because she passed on the first attempt. Now for Darlene, I'm going to give her one point and show you what happens. So right now, Darlene has failed this assessment and has no attempts remaining. If I click it and let's say maybe Darlene got four points out of the five, I'm going to click edit. So let's say maybe I put that in wrong and she actually had four points. I'm going to click set and uh, okay, so it says she failed, and she may attempt parts failed again. So sometimes, depending on the error threshold, it will let you know um, if you need to reteach a lesson or not. So I'm going to edit this and set the threshold for the testing a little lower to show you um, what will happen here for remedies. So if I click on this wrench, it's going to tell me that I need to reteach my whole entire corrective reading group part one and it is page 54 through 55 and I'm going to go in that um, curriculum based assessment handbook and go over that again and reteach it. Another thing that you'll be doing is the fluency checks and we are going to assess every five lessons so as I have the students in front of me, one by one, I'm going to have them read something fluently. And let's say this student read, um, and they, let's say that they read um, and had four errors, and they read in, let's say, 130 seconds. So I'm going to put this in and press set. So you can see this student right here has failed and she's not meeting the correct limit that they need to for their fluency lessons. So every five lessons you're going to record data or depending on what your administration says you may be doing fluency every lesson. I would think for Reading Mastery you'll probably be doing every lesson but again check with your administrator to see um, how many of the fluency lessons they want you putting in. So I would say for this, probably every one, because it goes 5, 10, 15, 20, and that's every five lessons. So um, that's the fluency check piece. So after I've entered my daily attendance, if I was testing, I entered my assessments for that day and wrote in my fluency checks, I want to look at my reports and see how my students are doing. So I'm going to, again, select my group. And... Right now I can see that my students have 100% attendance and they're, they've completed one lesson with 95% of um, their independent work completed. So this is um, a test that was given and part one, it looks like 50% of the people passed, one person, and then for here the one person failed this part. And the threshold is 75%. I'm going to click on Group Summary, and it gives me an idea of how my students are doing and if I need to do a group remedy or a reteach. So for here, um, Darlene did not pass this part, so I would be giving a um, group remedy where the failed parts is 25% or greater. You can also um, print the currently open tests to have all of your data um, if you need to hand it in for any type of tracking. CBA trends, you can see um, how students are doing individually, and then you can also see how your class is doing overall. And again, we're looking for that target of 80%. This is your reteaching where you can select by lesson for how you're going to reteach. This is the group fluency progress. Down here is the number of errors, and up here is words read per minute. The green line is the target line. Daily lesson progress. 
So, so far with the data I entered, um, we have completed our lessons. And for individual reports, if you need to pull data on a student, you can pull by a snapshot, which shows their attendance, independent work, fluency, and how they're doing on their tests. And as you get more data in, there will be more things here for you to see. So that is Reading Mastery um, for the reports. Now I'm going to click on Students and Groups. This is something that your reading coach can probably help you with. So I'm going to click on my reading group, and let's say I need to add in this student right here, Ryan. I'm going to press Add New Student. Oh, actually, let me try that again. Okay, so here's the reading mastery. Here's my two students down here, and I need to add Ryan to my group. So I'm going to click Add to Group. And now Ryan is in my group for Reading Mastery Grade 1. Um, you probably will not have these many groups. This is, again, the trial. Um, if you need to delete a group, like this end group, I'm going to click Delete. And then that gets rid of that group. Um, and let's say, for example, in my Reading Mastery first grade, if I had a student that had to leave, um, I could just click their name down here and then click Remove Student. My computer's still thinking. Okay, group removed. Took a little bit. So let's say um, I need to move Valerie out of this group because she's going to go into a different group. I would click Remove Student. Oh, actually, yeah. Remove from group. And then that pops her back over here. And she can go into a different group if we need to put her in. But this is something that your reading coach probably helped you set up. Um, but if you need to move within groups, if you have students that either move um, to a different class or a different level. This is the tab right here under Students and Groups where you would either move them or if you get a new student in, we would give them the placement test and then click Add New Student, put in their first name, last name, their grade, and then add them into the group they need to go in. So that is the Reading Mastery and what that online platform looks like. Now we're going to click over to the SRA corrective reading for third through fifth grade. So I'm going to log back in under the trial account. Click on to inform. Click on to inform again. Click again. And then I need to click on SRA corrective reading third through fifth grade. I'm going to select my group. I'm going to work with B1. And this is decoding B1. And it's very similar to reading mastery. I have my daily lessons where I enter attendance, my fluency checks, and my mastery tests. So the first thing that I'm going to do excuse me, is click on my daily lessons and I'm going to add a new class session. My students are in front of me. I'm going to click on the lesson that I'm teaching. Let's say today is a test day. And I'm going to mark all my students present, but Patricia, she's not here today. So I'm going to mark her absent. And then I'm going to press set. And you'll notice there isn't a, a button to click because this is not a lesson day, it's a test day. Oh, 
Okay, and here's my lesson right here. So I'm clicking set. I thought this would go away, but it's showing here, November 2nd. It says lesson 11. Hmm. Let me look again. What's going on here? So how about, okay, so for a test, you click no lesson and test day. Okay, I'm going to take attendance. Everybody's here except for Patricia. Set. Okay, so it's saying November 2nd, no lesson, because this was a test day. Okay, so now I'm going to go on, to click on my mastery tests. We're going to work with mastery test 5. And for each student, I'm just going to click how many points they got for each part and press set. Okay, and then we can do the same for the previous test. Whatever their score is, enter it and then click um, set. So let's take a look at these sets of data. So this first set of data, I have two students that failed and one, two, three, four students that passed. So there are some group remedies here that I already, or not I already, SRA Corrective Reading is suggesting. They're suggesting that I go over lessons 8 through 10 with the writing letters for sound lesson. So it's only part one. From lesson five, um, I'm going to go over example eight and 10 and so on. Part three, students are going to read words from lesson five and then so on. It tells you what to do for your whole group. For here, there are no group remedies because less than 30% or more than 30% um, passed. Uh, and we do have some individual remedies. So this student, Nolan, we need to go back and um, reteach this part to them. And then right here, um, we didn't have a 30% fail rate. So again, it's only going to be an individual remedy, um, not group. So you can follow up with the student to make sure that they are understanding um, the lessons, but Usually we want to do, if it's 30% or more of your class fails, that's when you do your reteach. Then we click on fluency checks. Um, again, I believe as a district we are doing every fifth lesson. So please check with your administrator to see if that is true. Um, when we click on our data, you can see that these students, they had their word count how many words they read in one minute, and their errors. So if you have a student that um, needs to redo their fluency, for example, Brooklyn and Ryan for lesson 16, they failed and can attempt again. So I would just talk to Ryan and Brooklyn and tell them, you um, didn't pass this passage and I would go over um, how many words they read per minute and what their errors were. And then I would give them a couple of days to practice that passage and then about two days later I would retest them and I would click enter new attempt and then I would just put in their new reading for how many words they read with error count. So then they'll get their second score which will be averaged in and the color will change. Um, it'll change to yellow if they pass it on the subsequent attempt red if they failed it, um, and then green is if they passed the first time. The last piece of data that you put in, I think I already went over, was the mastery tests. So now we're going to look at reports. So I'm going to look at B1, and I can see for my decoding B1 group, my student's average score is 86%. Um, Attendance is at 95%. And we've had 21 sessions, but have only completed 30, 13 lessons. So um, this is a conversation we would want to have to see if maybe the pacing is a little slow or is something happening during this time where the teacher is not able to get the lesson in to try to find out why we're not getting to um, that about one lesson a day. So if you have... Um, we want to look at your lessons completed in number of sessions and make sure that those numbers are pretty close. Um, but again, it comes down to having a conversation with how are you doing? Do you need assistance? Um, 
and if someone could come in to just assist, because sometimes when you begin a program, it's hard um, to get down the pacing and learn all of the new correction procedures and the signals. So it is understandable in the beginning that it will take time to learn this program. But we want to make sure that we're looking at our sessions and lessons completed and um, compare with the rest of our team to see how, how we're doing and if we're on track. You can also pull your mastery test group data by pass-fail. So this tells you um, for each part of the test the percentage that passed and the percent that failed. So this test right here, I would want to look and see why my students were not meeting um, the goal line. You can also look at your test group summary who passed and failed which part. Mastery test trends. This is a page that I like to look at a lot because it sticks, it stands out to me that I have three students that are not meeting the target of 90% on the test. I see that this student, uh, Christina, is at 99% for her tests. Um, Nolan is at 91%. Kayla, 98, and Patricia, 98. But right here, Kenneth, Brooklyn, and Ryan, I want to take a look closer at their data and scores and see and look at their individual report to figure out what's going on. If their data is this low, it may be that they are possibly in the wrong group, or maybe it's um, we need to back up with teaching and not move on until they're firm with what we're teaching in each lesson. Um, but again, that's a conversation to have um, with your team that you work with on, at your grade level and your coach to figure out, you know, why are these students not passing? There may be other reasons. And then we can also look at overall as a class how our students are doing on these tests. So I see for Mastery Test 3 and Mastery Test 5, the students are proficient, but these ones, um, they are not proficient. So again, we want to really dig into our data and figure out why our students are not meeting that 90% target. The mastery test remedies is what I showed you when we clicked on that little wrench. It tells you for each test what to do to reteach for the group or individual. There's a group fluency progress tab. This is students' um, errors, and these are words read. The daily lesson progress. So this gives me a snapshot for this teacher who teaches B1. They have completed 62% of their lessons. They have had two test days. Um, five lessons are incomplete, and they had one instruction in test day. So what I would want to do is look at these lessons and figure out why are they incomplete um, and make sure that we're not moving on until a lesson is finished. And again, this is a demo account, so a lot of people log in and play around with it. So it's not 100% an accurate picture of what your data might look like, but it gives you an idea. So the, another, the last report to look at is individual reports. And this is where you can look at each student and see how they are doing on their lessons. So Nolan, um, let's take a look at how he's doing. So he, oops, it keeps going away. So Nolan has been present for 17 out of 18 lessons. He was absent for one, so he's very good attendance. Um, his average score is 89% for his mastery tests and the highest score was 89%. And then this just gives me a snapshot of his tests. Um, when students move to different classes or different groups, it's going to be important that you print their profile report to give it to the teacher that they will be going to. Um, so that teacher has a snapshot of what this um, student has been doing in corrective reading. And I'm trying to get the print preview to load for you. But my, here we go. So there it is. Yeah. So at the end of the school year, 
um, when your students are getting ready to move, let's say they finished um, B1 and they're moving on to B2, this is a page that you would want to print to save for the teacher for the next school year or the next program so they have an idea of how the student did throughout the year with corrective reading. And also in corrective reading, the same as reading mastery, you can add and remove students to your group. But so the biggest pieces for corrective reading is that you are taking your daily attendance. Fluency checks are done every five lessons, but please check with your administration to see what their expectation is. And mastery tests are recorded and retaught as needed. The report tab is really important to check and see how your class is doing on the tests as a group and individually how students are doing. So if you have any questions, please contact myself, Lynn Yershak, or your administration. If you have any questions about corrective reading and reading mastery, and we can help make you um, have a successful, a, I'm sorry, a successful school year with this program. Um, last year I taught B1 corrective reading, and I coached in A, B1, B2, and C, and I'm also working with teachers this year um, with training for reading mastery. So if you need anything, please uh, reach out to your administration, coaches, or um, your school improvement team for help. Thank you, and I hope that this training was benef beneficial for you. Have a good day.